like we're in this um, Groundhog Day scenario where it's just kind of the same days. You know, the camp has been going on now for what? Call it a couple 10 weeks, days. Yeah. yeah. And it's like nothing really new has popped out. And as I'm getting ready for today, I had to remind myself how close we are to the start of college football. Now, not for the Ags. Obviously, we have, we have to wait for September 4th for that. But college football, a week from Saturday, will begin. And, and I looked at the very first game listed here. Nebraska, Illinois, Saturday at noon, our time. Man, what a barn burner to open the season, right? <laughs> and an hour after That's that. Brett Bielema. Yeah. Uh, a new coach at Illinois against... Maybe the coach who's on the hottest of hot seats. That's correct. Scott Frost. That is correct. A name that was the hottest name out there a couple years back. Well, I can remember all the uh, experts, the national experts, saying, oh, yeah, Nebraska had the best hire, and then they were ranking Texas A&M higher. That was the same summer, right? Yes. Or yes. same, same, same offseason, yeah. That's yeah, uh, they, interesting how things have changed. Well, you know, it's. I don't understand the Nebraska thing. Why are they not better? Oh, I've got a few, a few uh, theories. You know, I think like the Big Twelve is one of the worst things that ever happened to Nebraska. In the Big Eight, you know, you were uh, you were recruiting into Texas and other places around there, and saying, "Hey, you win, you go to the Orange Bowl. We're national." Da da da. At the time, the Texas teams were asking Texas kids just to play in Texas. Right. And if you win, you go to Dallas. Oh, I'm already here. Right. So uh, it was more regional, and you could offer a more national thing, and so, a, a more national uh, exposure. So when that changed, oh, and then they had the Proposition 48 thing where they could, you could not be able to get into school, most places, but you could get in. And then there was this little issue. Remember they um, made a big deal about their uh, – their, their walk-on program. You'd have all these uh, 180, 190-pound kids come in the walk-on walk -on program, and a year or two later, they're all around two, 260, 270, 290. And then they had some that was even drafted by the Dallas Cowboys. And then they said, oh, gosh, the NFL's cracking out on the steroid policy, and all of a sudden those guys weren't there anymore. That's just a lot of hard work and effort, OB. I don't know what you're talking There's about. There's a whole lot of things that, about Nebraska that was kind of – But when you think about the schools that – College football was built on, you know, just, the, you know, yeah. and, and maybe not built on, but there are certain schools that you think eventually they'll figure it out. They just have it. I think Nebraska is kind of like Tennessee and that, you know, uh, there are going to be years, I think, where they'll be good again. I mean, really good. But th those are going to be the exception to the rule. Right. Um, but, yeah, those are the – I think when Nebraska went to the Big 12, all of a sudden the schools they were recruiting against – could offer the same thing Nebraska would could without having to go and play in or spend a winter where it's zero degrees. Right. So, um, uh, and, you know, I think also the rise of Oregon. There's a lot of California players that go to Oregon that I think would have gone to uh, Nebraska. Sure. You know, so things change in that regard. Yeah. Back in the day, let's face it, it wasn't that long ago where not every team – was uh, putting all their 100% effort into having a, a, a successful football program. Remind me how well Bo Pelini did in Nebraska. Actually, he was Bo actually pretty good, right? He, he was. I think he had something like uh, – I, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I think he had like five, six years in a row, however long he was there, where they won at least nine games. Right. And, and some ten-game wins in there. Uh, they never should have fired Frank Solich. You know, but they were spoiled from the Tom Osborne years. So it was kind of like, do you want to be the guy that follows the legend? Because if you don't, if you don't become a legend yourself, then you're looked at as a failure. Uh, then they went with the Bill Callahan disaster. Oh, that was a disaster, yeah. And then they tried Mike Riley out of Oregon State. Good Who guy. Who was another like name, a guy, a very good guy. Good guy, but... You know, sometimes you just got to be, you got to, your personality has to fit a place. Sure. And his personality didn't fit there. And now, you know, everything was going to be Scott Frost and he's just been over his head. And, you know, it seems to me that there's a lot of coaches. Now, some are successful. A lot of come from that Conference USA and, and that American, that ilk. And then they get it, you know, they do well there. I think Houston, UCF, or some of those programs that you just have to be incompetent as a head coach 
not to be successful against because you've got the recruit a better recruiting base than the teams you're facing. Then you're facing in your conference, absolutely. Yep. And so then they said, well, this is just gonna gonna transfer to uh, Nebraska. It's gonna be the same. Well, no, it's not really the well, same, is it? It's kind of like being the quarterback for a team in the NFL or for a team in New York or playing for the Yankees or playing for another franchise is there's a different level of scrutiny, a different level of feeling when you're at a, at a certain type of program that when you're Nebraska is a, is a big deal, right? There's no doubt about that. Other programs, the university of Houston, you just win a little bit. You're in a good place there, right? There's, there's a different level of scrutiny. That's why with, with Billy, you talk about not Billy Lucci, Billy Gillespie, Certain personalities fit a program. I felt like Gillespie at the time fit A and M perfectly, mm-hmm. but did not fit Kentucky. No. Regardless of the wins and losses, just his personality did not fit there at that time. And, and that's why you see some coaches that are be very successful one place, and they're not successful at another. But then they'll leave. I think of Howard Schnellenberger, wildly successful at Miami, Miami very successful at Louisville, five hundred coach at Oklahoma, and they're running him off. You know, I mean, is he just a bad coach at Oklahoma? No, for some reason, you know. Sometimes it's just the fit, the people around you, your the timing of all it. All those things. It's, it's true. And that's why, you know, A&M can count their blessings because I think they not only have a good coach, but I think they have a coach, obviously, that fits A&M and fits the culture and understands it. And I'll go back to Summy. I think his time at A&M, especially in the beginning with the perfect timing, the perfect relationships when he started here in eleven. Uh, for that era of Aggie football. I mean, that time went away, but in the beginning, I thought he fit exactly what they needed entering the well, SEC. Well, I agree with that. I, I Now, uh, I didn't think he was going to, in my opinion, get lazy and stop coaching. Right. But um, I think that A&M had a, na- a very stale, stodgy national image. Um, and I think that when you hired Sumlin, you, you uh, looked like you were trying to I don't know, add some pizzazz to, to your program, uh, a different personality, a different style. Right. And, of course, it didn't, we didn't realize it, but it didn't hurt that he also had the best quarterback in school history waiting on him and maybe the best receiving core and the best offensive line, all those waiting for. So it, he did have a perfect storm, and then he had Cliff Kingsbury as his offensive coordinator. But uh, I, think they, I think they wasted – that 2012 season by not recruiting and building on it. We talk about timing and fit and whatnot. What about Coach Fran? He was a hot name. He was the name back when they hired him. He was. And and he lost his mojo, lost his fastball, and even afterward. I think um, he didn't recruit as well as he thought he would. And uh, I've said this many times. I think Coach Fred, I think Dennis, I always called him Dennis. I don't know if it was – just to be different or to irritating. But uh, I think, first of all, he really loved being the coach here and wanted to be successful, but his whole personality changed. He came here as a coach that had a reputation of taking some chances and, you know, uh, you know, doing some unorthodox things. And then he got here and he coached every game not to lose. Right. Uh, especially after his – I think it was after his second year. He is okay in his second year, had a pretty good year. Went to the Cotton Bowl, got killed by Tennessee, but went to the Cotton Bowl. After that, they almost got beat by Baylor. Reggie McNeil had to uh, talk him into going for it on fourth down instead of punting when they never would have gotten the ball back. And McNeil was able to take him down and score, and I think they won it in overtime. Um, and then he, you know, everybody knows about the Oklahoma thing where yes. they're. But I think what he did was uh, when things weren't going <clears throat> as easy for him as he thought they would be. He says, well, I'm going to go back to what I know, which is the option, which is what college football was getting away, away from. from that, right. But I'm going to go back to that. And by the way, I had it. My, the best player on my team is my quarterback, who I promised that I would not go to the option. But we're going to go back to but, the option. And to keep him from transferring. And now he doesn't trust me. And now I've got this divide in the locker room, and it became a – just a, a, a mess because I've alienated my best player by lying to him. And look at what we've got. Was it Miami that Reggie was looking into? Yeah. In Miami. 
So we have a, a question for the day, and we don't need to answer it right now, but I would like to get your text messages on the A and B text line and your phone calls on the uh, BCSI hotline, that number for both of those, 979-693-1150. So here around 8.30 or so, Theodore Mellon Ostrom, that's how I'm going to say his name, okay? The Swedish tight end is supposed to announce. I think it's Ohio State, A&M, and I forget the third school, maybe Bama, whoever it may be. He's going to announce there around 8.30. Why is somebody from Sweden thinking about A&M or Ohio State or Alabama or wherever he's there? Like, how does that happen? And what is the pitch to get a guy like that? So I throw out the question out there. What would be your pitch to a top recruit from outside the country to come to A&M? And thinking about this, and we can maybe even use this for places. Was it anything uh, Mo that I had in here who didn't know anything about A&M until her recruiting trip when she came here, right? And and. You may have heard the brand, but you don't really know the brand. How do you tell that story to somebody who knows nothing about your culture, nothing about your program, nothing about your coach, nothing about the city itself? What is your pitch to recruit a top, to, to pitch to a top recruit from outside the country to come to Texas A&M? Let that kind of sink in and, and get me your thoughts here on the a and text line. And with that, we go to the mothership, as I call the fishbowl, Dalton in there. Good morning to you, Dalton. Good morning. Yeah, sorry. I was taking some time to check out the show on YouTube. It's on in front of me and in my ear, but that wasn't enough. I had to pull it up on my phone and watch watch it all on YouTube as well. Why are you doing it on all three? I mean, I love it because it helps our numbers, but why on all, all the platforms out there? Because I just want to show people how accessible we are, David. Well, I, I appreciate the brand. Have you seen, you probably haven't, OB. He's been putting some graphics together for our, for our YouTube show. It's like high quality stuff. Yeah, Dalton, for all we like to make fun of him, actually goes out and does some really good work for us even though i want to i want to uh before you know we start patting dalton on on that enormous back too much i want to back up okay and say that i'm disappointed that you said we didn't think on this and you got away from the marinated thing i oh. think you could do something with this i think you could turn this into a daily thing i was about to say what meat Laurie, maybe you can get lowry's or whatever Seasoning to sponsor sold, that yeah. you know well, hey, hey if we got a sponsor i'll do it let's you, uh this is let's marinate uh nuno's marinating minute yeah with with am i sponsor, marinating sponsored by lowry's or whoever does uh who, famous for marinating look, whoever wants to marinate let's do it guys let's let's become a part of the sponsor you know what the, our youtube show could be marinated and also sponsored i think i'm wasting myself here i think i should be in marketing ob you could have you could have done well i could see ob like being in mad men back in the day just chain smoking. You know what? For sure. Sure. I don't know about the chain smoking, but I think my personality would have been uh, perfect for that. Yes. So the, the yes, things that the things that get you in trouble today were very uh, acceptable then. By the way, I've only watched one or two episodes of that show, but everybody tells me I would love it. Are you guys co-signing? Are you all in on this show, Mad Men? Yeah, I've watched it. It's a, it's a good watch. Yeah, it's a good show. I haven't I haven't watched every episode, but I, when I have watched it, I've said, oh, this is pretty good. I like it. And remind me, were you on the Game of Thrones train or no? Yes, I did like it. I, not nearly as much as my wife, who could remember the names of all the characters. I'm like, you know, because yeah, there's so many so, characters. I'm yeah. like, I, I can't do that. The prequel series coming out soon. Dalton, you a Game of Thrones guy? Yeah, I've seen every episode multiple times. Multiple times? I've gone through it, I think, twice. You know nothing, Dalton. I do know nothing, but I do drink Dalton Snow. because I know things. By the <laughs> way, The Red Wedding still, to me, is one of the best episodes of television I've ever watched in my life. <laughs> um, um, that or Battle of the Bastards. Brian Davis, the uh, Texas beat writer for the Austin American Statesman, was telling me that they labeled this, uh, this uh, press conference that Tom Herman had as the the red wedding because he invited everybody in he had he had pizza oh, yes, right. were you did you know about no, it? i heard there? about it yeah and then he tells oh we're gonna be getting the fbi after you if you write things that aren't approved you know stuff like uh you know if, if you do like things that are protected by the constitution we're gonna have the fbi on you and they called that the red wedding i forget who it was i think it was john mcclain of the chronicle i think and and let me just tell the story he wrote something about a particular player and 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 the player did not like what he wrote it's back. I think it was during the Oilers days, during the 80s. And he's like, I'm going to be here longer than you, McLean says to the, the player. So you can think what you want, but I'm going to outlast you. And he has outlasted people. And that's exactly what happened to Tom Herman and everybody in the media that he went after. <laughs> They're still there, and he's not. Yeah, yeah, it happens quite a bit, actually. Hey, when we come back on the show, 
21 and 21, brought to you by Factory Builder Stores. We go to number eight and a name that we have said many, many times. We'll have that and more here on Texas Radio. Yeah, let's marinate. Get the Zone Daily Newsletter emailed to you no. at zone1150.com. Verabank is open and we are excited to serve you in College Station. Hi, this is Erica Archer, Treasury Management Officer at Verabank, and I specialize in helping businesses run their day-to-day operations more efficiently, saving you valuable time. Our team's job is to make yours easier. So give us a call or come by and see us off of Highway 6. At Verabank, you have a team of genuine bankers on your side, and you can bank on it. Visit verabank.com today. That's V-E-R-A bank.com. Verabank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Everyone in the Brazos Valley has a unique story to tell. It's a community made up of survivors. He's going to to have a full recovery. He's got such a good attitude about everything. Hard workers. Everyone kind of had a pivot and looked to see how things were going to change. Visionaries. That really drives that economic engine for growth within the Brazos Valley. And just good people. There are inspiring stories everywhere you look. And your local news team is dedicated to bring you more on KRHD News. Connecting the Brazos Valley. Grab your first cup of coffee weekday mornings with Keyshawn, J. Will, and Subin. Powered by WC Tractor. Here on 1150 AM and 93.7 FM. Plus, Plus. online at RadioAggieland.com. WC Tractor is your local award-winning Kubota and New Holland dealer. You have questions? Look them up online. Or at WCTractor.com. That's WCTractor.com. You can also call with your questions at 1-888-8-TRACTOR. That's 1-888-8-TRACTOR. ESPN Radio. Powered by WC Tractor. Here on The Zone. We think it's time for a laugh. Brian Broadcasting and the Nikki Peterson Talent Network present Good Clean Fun, a comedy night with Carrie Pomeroy. So you guys, yes, I am a member of the Mommy Mafia. I have two kids. I have a four-year-old and a good one. Hollywood's favorite clean comedian is live in College Station, Friday, September 3rd at 7 p.m. at Skybreak Church. I was in the Zuma class, and there's this teacher, right? And she's all cute and sassy, and she's like, shake what your mama gave you. I'm in the back going, my mama gave me sciatica and allergies. <laughs> Bring your friends, bring a date, bring anyone who's ready for a good time. You guys, who's happy just to be out of the house? Really? Right, right? Good Clean Fun, a comedy night with Carrie Pomeroli, September 3rd, presented by Nikki Peterson Talent Network. Be discovered. Thanks in part to our sponsors, Strata Auto Repair, Mark's Manny's Appliance Repair and Cleaning Service, Dirt Road Rustics Furniture and Home Decor, Buff City Soap, Soap Makery, and Longway Home Adoptables. Tickets, VIP, and group packages available at brianbroadcasting.com. On Sports Talk, Chip visits with Jeff Bergman, the voice of everyone's favorite cartoon characters. Well, I have to say the voice of the rabbit dog. Nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, I say, I say, I say, foghorn leghorn. <laughs> uh, no, I say, nice boy, but about as sharp as a sack of wet mice. Sports Talk, the voice of reason. Weekdays from 4 to 6 on Sports Radio 1150 AM and 93.7 FM. Ah, uh, thanks, Chip. 'm you know what I think makes him catch passes so well he's so short I think he does that really well I think it's really good because he's shorter than I am and uh, he, I think that really benefits him in how he does things just to make sure you tell him I said that all right but uh, no he his hands he, he really is he's a natural he's, he has natural ball skills I say this all the time his great at track I mean got qualified in 100 and 200 meters in the in a 10 flat and a 20.2 but he is he is a football player who plays track and that is Jimbo Fisher breaking down our number eight here on uh, 21 and 21 presented by Factory Builder Stores. And that would be Devon A. Chain, the great running back. And Factory Builder Stores celebrating over 30 years as the largest contract distributor in Texas. They can service builders and general public with locations throughout Texas, including right here in College Station on Old Welburn Road and Rock Prairie, just on the west side of the railroad tracks. Go see our friends there, Jason and John. They're going to take great care of you for any and all of your appliance needs. Go check them out. All right, so A-Chain it is. The world saw him. America saw him at the Orange Bowl. We've seen this kind of bubbling for a little while. OB, uh, he didn't get his start last year for a little bit, and I think it was in October when he got going, but uh, when he's got when he was out there, he made a, a huge impact. Man, did he. Uh, gosh, at the end of this year, we may be looking silly for having him at eight, right? Right. Um, just a guy who's a just a spectacular prospect. I mean, he's already showed us what kind of player he can be in a small sample size. Imagine when you get the 
the, the economy size, you know, when it's huge and you get it, and he gets the ball a lot more. Uh, and I think he will get the ball a lot more. Um, that, that, cause Jimbo Fisher is a smart guy. And <laughs> if you're looking for matchups that favor you, what matchup can you give, uh, what that's not in your favor when Devon A chain has the football? I've compared him. I don't know if anybody else would agree with this. Uh, you'd have to be older like me. I compared him to Tony Dorsett in that he's really fast, and that's what you think about. But then you find out he runs with a whole lot more power than you than, than, than maybe you expected. And I go back to the Arkansas game where he finally gets in late, and he runs for a 30-yard touchdown. But the, the thing that really stood out was he just split to Arkansas. He ran through two tacklers like, they, like you're running through a turnstile. Right, and then you go to the South Carolina game. He had the long, he, you know, ran the ball really well, but then had the long uh, touchdown pass. Shows what you can do. Put him on a linebacker coming out of the uh, out of the backfield, going deep, and, and you know, it's a it's a mismatch. You go to the uh, Auburn, Auburn game, game, yeah, and he was just he was just dominant in in that game. And then you know, we all saw the Orange Bowl. You, you know, the, that's where the, the world really like who's this kid. Yeah. So. Uh, and I think that's just the tip of the proverbial iceberg. I know you agree with that. And what Jimbo did uh, indicate that uh, we should expect to see him returning kickoffs, which yes. A&M only returned three all of last year. But uh, If he's out there, you're going to do you more would, than three. Yeah, you would think so, because he has that ability to take it all the way, we know. He, he does that. 461 total yards from scrimmage. 364 of those came on the ground. Uh, he played in six games. And really, as you mentioned, the, the Auburn game, the Orange Bowl, the South Carolina game, really where, where things started going for him. And one thing that I, and I wonder with a new offensive line, that we still have to see how they gel together. That could be an advantage for A-Chain. What I mean by that is, as they're starting to gel, you put a guy like A-Chain whose speed can get around the edges, it can really open up some things that may not be there initially up the middle. Well, the thing about Devon is he's so fast that, uh, you know, he's fast everywhere. So he's fast to the hole. True. So he's probably one of those guys. I, I would have to ask the line, uh, the lineman, and I'm sure they, but I bet they'd say this. One of those guys you don't have to hold your block for very long, you know, or even doesn't even have to be a great block. You can make a Tim Tebow block. I don't know if you saw that, and yeah. <laughs> and get him around the corner, and he's around the corner and by everybody. Right. Uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is just interrupt. A defense or a defensive players with his speed? momentum. Yeah, if you just you don't have to knock him down or even stop him, but interrupting and uh, and and I'll, I'll change around him. So remind me, a chain before October seventeenth when he when he started playing. Were there a lot of whispers for him to get out there? I don't know if there was that. I think it was you know people remembered what he did in high school. Uh, gosh, I did. I saw him come out here and play against Bernie, and I'm like, holy cow. I mean, I know this guy's amazing. And I watched him on TV in the state championship game. And I was like, man, this guy can really catch the ball. Uh, he's a complete player. He actually, uh, it, it, to me, looked like he was pretty good in pass uh, protection as well. But, uh, you know, what was going on there is, you know, we started the year with with uh, um, Anias at running back. Right. And then it was more like, hey, Look at what's going on with Isaiah Spiller. And so I think to a certain degree, A-Chain was forgotten about because it was a position that wasn't really needed. You, you were fine. But because even though Anias had moved to receiver, you know, they, they liked the moving back. I, I go to the uh, Mississippi State game. You know, he's back and forth. And at one point, they fake a, uh, a run left to Isaiah Spiller and throw back right to uh, to Anais for a touchdown. They both lined up in the backfield together. So, you know, they were doing all these things where you say, hey, you really don't, you know, you've got what you need at running back uh, because you can use both of those guys interchangeable. But then when they did bring him in again in garbage time against Arkansas, and you went, whoa, yeah, I remember this guy. And, right. And look at that. And then it was just, uh, you know, he, he – as a freshman, you know, learning things, and he played his way into the lineup, and then you, you know, you come away thinking, okay, this guy's a budding star. And we haven't gotten into his track, <laughs> his, just that he does so part time and sizzled this year. One of the fastest out there, uh, third fastest in the NCAA uh, in the Texas relays on the two hundred with a time of twenty thirty one. Just a ridiculous 
Bruce Feldman naming him one of the freakiest athletes, that's an understatement. Yeah, um, and the thing about track, and I'll say this again, we, we said it in, you know, all off season was – Imagine what he would do if all he did was track. Right. And I'm glad. And I think Jimbo, he said this several times, and it's so true. He's a football player running track, not a track player playing football. And there's there, a there's a huge difference. You've seen those guys that are fast, but they get out on their field, they don't know what they're doing. Right. Or or they're just not a dominant player. You right. know, they're they're okay. Uh, but but you know he's a football player that's just that's just fast enough that is so fast he can run track, and. Uh, uh, but but to run a ten flat and what was it twenty two twenty point two those are amazing and to do it to get into the uh, to the Olympic trials as eighteen or nineteen year old and you're only training for track beginning in I guess February because you're training for football up until the Orange Bowl right. and then you probably had to take some time to relax and at some point I I think they want him to do some of the football training all right let's do this let's let's hit a break here because we're still waiting to hear what theodore mellon ostrom i think i called him thomas but theodore mellon ostrom is going to announce here it's expected any minute now and uh, we'll be on top of that here on texags radio but uh, number eight in our factory builder stores 21 and 21 devon h i'm tulsi reber with your community calendar on the zone now on display at the Arts Council, Refrigerator Art. Art created during summer art camps and Saturday adult classes will be displayed in the lobby gallery through the end of August. The prenatal clinic is now accepting honoree nominations for the 28th annual You're the Tops event. The nomination form can be downloaded at bcsprenatal.org. The deadline is August 31st. A free seminar for seniors on evaluating your home for safety, comfort, and aging is being held the afternoon of Wednesday, September 1st. Contact the Mature Well Lifestyle Center to register. Registration is now open for nonprofits wanting to participate in this year's Brazos Valley Gives event. Register at brazosvalleygives.org. You can hear Aggie football, Aggie basketball, and Aggie baseball right here on Zone 1150 AM and 93.7 FM. Online, listen to your favorite Aggie teams play at RadioAggieland.com. I'm Chelsea Reber on The Zone. Who knew mowing could be this fun? Hi, this is David from Kairos Truck Center inviting you to come down and take a test drive on one of our zero-turn mowers from Cub Cadet or Ferris. There's no better way to social distance than getting outdoors. At Kairos Truck Center, we offer zero money down and zero percent interest on all our zero-turn mowers. At Kairos Truck Center, we make mowing as close to fun as it gets. Kairos Truck Center, Highway 21, half a mile east of the bypass in Bryant. Unlike other health concerns, mental illness is not always easy to see. Depression won't show up on an eye chart, and you can't measure it on your bathroom scale. Sorting out a mental health concern is not something to attempt on your own. You won't find a bipolar disorder by looking at a thermometer. Like many other health conditions, help for mental illness takes professional diagnosis and treatment. Anxiety won't just go away under a stick-on bandage. So the sooner you seek treatment, the better. If you or a loved one has a mental health concern, don't go it alone. Find out what to do. For 24-hour free and confidential information and treatment referral, Call 1-800-662-HELP. Learn more at samhsa.gov slash support. That's S-A-M-H-S-A dot gov slash support. Keyshawn Johnson, Jay Williams, and Zubin Mahente. Let's bring in Jeff Darlington. Jeffrey! Great synergy, by the way, Key. I think we're really nailing this together. This is like uh, some sort of dating show. We'd be certainly on our way to blissful reunion we're, we're just nailing this I and i think we're gonna nail this I, one too i'd love to be chuck <laughs> right now i just love the, i just love the chemistry okay it's Keyshawn, j will and zoom espn, ESPN radio. radio mornings five to eight on the zone thanks to wc, WC tractor, tractor. Kind of sound like breakdown. Yeah. Tom Petty a little bit. Not that I know what that is, but yeah. 
Oh, okay. You don't? I mean. Not real familiar with I don't Tom talk Petty's I, catalog, though? Gr- great head of hair. I don't know the name of songs. I know people get upset. And, I hate this Nuno guy. He knows no music. It's true. Well, you know your, the music you like. I don't even know the names of the songs oh, really? I like. Really? I just, okay. Track four or that, that oh, new okay. song on this album. Like, I, I just, there was a time I knew all that stuff. So I am uh, following CBS HQ, and uh, they still haven't announced where Theodore Ostrom is going to be going. But it does say the finalists, Ohio State, Texas A&M, and LSU. So we'll, we'll be on top of that, let you know how that goes. It is Texas Ags Radio presented by David Gardner's Jewelers here in the Rollo Insurance Studio. Uh, the BCSI Associates hotline is 979-693-1150. If you want to jump in on what would be your pitch to a top recruit from outside the United States, as the great OB reminded me, let that marinate as we get into <laughs> that topic here. Uh, also on the AMB text line. Yesterday was the first day of school, and I got mixed reports from the kids at home. Really? Mixed reports. Everybody had a good day, but the youngest was like, nobody would play with me at recess. Like, well, you're the new kid. It's going to take some time. Like, yeah. they don't know who you are. Like, you're like, who's this random person in my class? So, uh, but all the kids had fun, and, and they liked their teachers, which is the most important thing. Yeah, well, what is she, in the third grade? She's in third grade, yeah. yeah. Um, my son was a new student at Greensbury in the fourth grade. Okay. Absolutely loved it. Yeah. It was a great experience the whole, the two years he was there. That's wonderful. Everybody tells me that it's going to be great. It's going to be. I love the teachers that we've met so far. It's, uh, it, it's cool. But we still think back on Mr. Parr with great fondness. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Parr. Mr. Parr. Okay. And Miss Anderson. So we don't have them. We have Mrs. P. Next year. Next year. Okay. Yeah. All right. Next year when we get there. So, uh, but the one thing I was actually here, you might have been in the studio with me talking. Cruz, I told him to text me. During the, uh, it was it was Bronny. It was I said text me, and let me know how the day is going. And I think you can only text at uh, at in middle school at lunch. Perhaps you can't be on your phone. So he texts me. He goes, "It's great, but it's going so slow." That's first day vibes, first day, baby. Yeah, first day vibes. So have you thought about it a little bit on how you would pitch to a recruit? From outside the country or just somebody who does, maybe from Mars, right? There's a, you know, the Space Jam, the movie. Somebody who doesn't know the area, how do you pitch to a top recruit the advantages of A&M over some of the other ones out there? In this example, Ohio State, LSU, we'll throw in Alabama, we'll throw in the University of Miami, USC. How do you pitch to them to come to A&M? Well, you know, first of all, I'd start off very much like I would anybody else because I think they're, uh, even if you're from a, a, another country, I think as an athlete and a football player, you still want the same things that everybody else wants. You want to be able to uh, play in the SEC against the, the best competition. Yep. You want to get great coaching, and you want to have a chance to get into the NFL. And especially at the position, I'm going to say, hey, let me tell you what we're doing at tight end and what I've done at Florida State with tight ends and what I've done here. I've already had a guy who's a three-star guy from some place up in Oklahoma, and I got it. he's playing for the Packers now. Right. So – uh, so, so, so I, I'm going to appeal to what all athletes want. And I, you know, and I think I can help you get to the NFL. Okay. Well, and you're going to play a lot. So be prepared because we're going to use our tight end. And I, I know you're not just saying to tight end, but if he was a defensive line recruiter or defensive end, I'd be saying the same thing. You know, I'd be saying, here's what we do. Uh, but I would find out if maybe, you know, uh, here Uh-oh. he comes. Is it official? Theodore Mellon Ostrom has committed to Texas A&M. Dalton, this just came down moments ago? Correct. He was live, and uh, he just announced, made the call for A&M. We are getting Billy Lucci on the phone line now, uh, so I'll have him shortly. But, yeah, I saw another one at, in the boat. I saw him at Cooper's when he was here for the camp. Oh, you did? He, he, he's an enormous kid, by the way, as you would expect. But uh, a good-looking athlete, very polite guy. We had a little conversation. I kind of felt good about him coming to A&M then. Yeah, did you really? But he, I mean, he's an enormous kid, big kid. And this is such a tight NU. Uh, it's we, getting that way. Yeah, I mean, just nonstop, just really big. And, and, and that's what I'm going to sell him on at that position. You know, that's what I was saying. Hey, when I was the coach at Florida State, we put Nick O'Leary and some other guys into the NFL. Then I got here, Jay Sermer. Uh, people are saying that, that uh, Wadermeyer is going to be the number one tight end. So you can't teach size, right? And and somebody with size and athletic ability, you can work on it. You can fine tune it. But some of that is God given. What my question would be for any kid playing outside the U.S. is: What kind of competition are you seeing? What who are you playing? Like what what is the level? I don't know 
Like, is he playing with, kind of reminds me of the, the NBA in the 1950s. Will Chamberlain could have played in any era, mm-hmm. but who's he playing against, right? That would be my question. And, and that's, a, you know, that's a valid concern, but you, know, you could say the same thing about Baylor Cup. Yeah. You know, here's a guy who's playing against two A competition. Is that going to translate to the NFL? I think, or to the SEC? I think what you're going to do is, what Jimbo does is, I'm going to look at, do you have the physical tools required? Okay, you got it. Now, when I watch you, do I see athleticism? And Jimbo obviously has a great eye, especially at tight end. And then, uh, you know, I'm going to coach you up, and I don't have you don't have to play next year, right? So. Uh, Especially where tight ends concerned, I'm just I'm never going to question Jimbo Fisher. All right, let's go now to the uh, BCSI hotline. We are joined by Texas executive editor and co-owner Billy Lucci, who's been on this story from the beginning. Lucci, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, Theodore Mellon Ostrom and and A and M. Theo, what a get what a get for the Ags. You know, this is a guy. You know, Howell and I did the in-house visit. Probably a couple weeks ago, Ronnie was on vacation, I know, at that time, but it was sounding like the Ags were getting, I mean, you just never know when, when you know, when there's time and, and you're looking at who's, uh, who's in the running, Ohio State, Alabama, LSU, Oklahoma, A&M, Florida State. I mean, think about a young man from Sweden that plays football, at, you know, at one of the academies there in Europe. Obviously, it's a different level of competition, but they they just continue to produce uh, American football players and, and big time high end D one players out of that PPI program. And he plays at the Rig Academy out there. But imagine coming through camp and you're so impressive in the camp setting, like going against some of the best cover people in the country, going through all the drills that they do to e- evaluate that. Nick Saban, Lincoln Riley, uh, Ryan Day, Jimbo Fisher, Ed Ogeron, they all offer you. You look, you look that good. You're that impressive. So that tells you what he's got physically, how competitive he is, uh, the athletic traits combined with the size. This is a guy that's 6'6", 245 in high school still. I mean, those are, you know, he's out there putting up NFL type numbers in high school and uh also james coley what a job by him i mean james coley came in and thought of as one of the top recruiters in the country that's his reputation hard earned over the years um at georgia at miami at florida state i mean that that's that's who he is but coming in with the way a and m uh kind of does their recruiting here it's really is more positionally than by area well comes in late uh, signs finds Fernando Garza at Katy, falls in love with him, signs him. But this was really the first cycle where Coley was able to kind of take a true national uh, approach to tight end recruiting, and he goes and gets uh, Donovan Green, who I think should be a five star, he's close to it anyway, but a special player out of Dickinson. So there's one, and then to get uh, Theo today, where he takes it internationally, and again, you look at the competition there for him. It was as, as tough as any. They've got a lot of big time commitments right now in the twenty two and twenty three class. I'm not sure that 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 battle they won today will kind of be uh, you know be understated a little bit because we haven't been everyone hasn't been reading and hearing all about Theo for the last two years like like guys like you know like a Bryce Anderson or Bobby Taylor or uh, Connor Wigman all you know all these guys that the Ags have been recruiting for a really long time. Theo kind of popped on the scene everywhere this summer. But, man, if you think about who they had to outlast for him, it's going to stand right now as one of the biggest recruiting battles they've won in terms of, you know, most contested anyway. Luch, what changed or what, what what was the deciding factor? In June, I think everybody was kind of even with him. And then, obviously, the the camp start, the, the visit start. Is, is that just he got on campus and it was just a game changer? Uh, yeah, I think that it was just it was just his relationship with Coley and Fisher, and he loved the way A and M uses the tight ends in the offense, and that's something I think he researched. And but yeah, he came back to camp twice. You know, came back through a second time, so he was here two days. And I think 
I think it really, you got to give Coley a hell of a lot of credit here. And then Jimbo, for make, they just made him feel, I think he felt at home. The irony is he mentioned dude perfect. <laughs> and that was kind of what got him into football. And you saw like a dude perfect video with Odell Beckham. I wonder if he even knows that dude perfect or Aggie. You know, um, uh, he Billy, does. <laughs> Billy, there are going to be Do those. What? Yeah, Hal brought it up in his Q&A. He, he knows about dude perfect. Okay, good. Thanks, Dalton. I didn't realize I was going to lure you out of hiding with that one. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> there are going to be those that are uh, going to be underwhelmed uh, to some degree because he's a European player. But, you know, we've seen Marcus Hunt, and I think it was a guy from uh, Arkansas a couple of years ago. Their best offensive lineman was from, I think, Denmark. And yeah. uh, Jimbo Fisher has had success uh, with European players before. Sure. I know there was a defensive end from Germany. So, um Tell me why uh, there would be no, there should be no apprehension about this guy as far as the fact that he's from Europe. Well, I think you just said it all, and and, and he's a guy that won't have to play from day one, but physically he's going to be ready to. And you look at Jordan Moko and the early returns on on Moko uh, are really promising. I actually ran into him on Monday when or Sunday when we were leaving the presser, and he said, "Man, it's." mental side of it's coming to me a lot quicker than I, than I was expecting even. So he, even he, you know, he's pleased with kind of how it's coming together for him. Um, and that, that's the part, that's the adjustment. Um, but in, in the case of, of Theo, he's played football four years. He's got two more years of high school. He's going to, you know, have six years of football under his belt when he gets here. So he's not going to be, nearly as green as I think a lot of people would think with an international player. And again, with that size, I mean, who knows how big he'll be when he gets here, but physically I think he'll come in ready. It's just going to be the, Hey, the adjustment, but Oh, and see, here's what I always say about these things now with the way football has kind of gone worldwide. You know, every school in the country is fighting for he, uh, hero canoe who's, Playing, I think he's playing this year in America. But a lot of these kids, they, if they grow up playing, it's like Moko was playing against 19 and 20 year olds in high school because, in the way those countries are set up to play American football, there's just not a lot of, uh, you know, so I, I would say that Jordan Moko was playing against better, m- more Division One type football prospects and bigger, more physical people and say if you went out and signed, let's like, say like a Baylor Cup from a 1A high school. I mean, some of these guys playing 1A, 2A football. Now, they grew up in the game, and that's a big difference, but you can, they are tested and, and a little more so than you think, and I don't think it's, it's an adjustment period. Uh, the adjustment period is nearly as big as people believe. And again, Coley, Fisher, this offense, I think that, man, you, they develop guys. They've done a terrific job of developing football players here. Raw, position changes, whatever you want to go down the list right now, you can. Um, and they're working on their first international one here. But like you said, Fisher's done it. And uh, development is a strength of this staff. And the tight end position is a strength of this program. And I think that combination takes the worry level to zero in that regard. Hey, Billy, I'm going to ask you about this on Friday, but real quick, just uh, some quick thoughts on Don Mulbach, who uh, it was let go from the Lions yesterday and what he meant to the NFL, what he meant to the Lions, and what he means to to the Ags. Oh, I think just it was really cool the way the, the Lions honored him uh, with that release, the statement or whatever. I mean, he's been part of that 20 years. Are you kidding me? Like, I remember Don when he played here. He's one of the nicest guys ever. Uh, and obviously, a lot of people remember his brother who came and played basketball here and walked on from Arizona and ended up playing a lot for uh, Mark, uh, Mark Turgeon's teams. Was was kind of a junkyard dog guy that was an unbelievable athlete. But Mulebach, I, I, he was a great guy when he was here. I don't, it's very evident that hadn't changed. You know, I've talked to Dan when Dan played with him. Now Dan, you know, was coaching him, so I'm definitely going to have to give him a hard time for, for uh, making that cut at some point there. But 20 years, it, it's absolutely incredible, 19, whatever it was. But 
I mean, I, when I tweeted the other day, if you played for Arsenal <laughs> Slocum and you're still in the NFL, <laughs> you've, done, you've done the damn thing. All right, Luch. We appreciate it, brother. We'll see you on Friday. All right, guys. See yeah, you. Billy Lucci. Uh, Lucci. Executive <laughs> editor and co-owner of TechSags here, breaking it down with uh, the, the newest commit. Right now, I want to talk about my longtime friend, Chance McLean. He captures your stories. He captures memories with Heritage Films, Your Heritage Films. Film.com is the website. You want to go check it out. He makes high quality documentaries like HBO, Netflix, all those big companies. He does it for you and your family. So think about it. If you've got a, a story or you want to tell your, your mom's story, your father's story, you want it so your kids can watch, he's the guy to do it. And he's going to do it high quality Hollywood S style documentary. It's all about your family, and he's the guy to do it for you. Birthday, Father's Day, Mother's Day, anniversary. Capture that moment. Trust me, you're not going to forget it. You are, uh, you're You're going to see his great work. One of the most talented guys I've ever met. I was with him at 1560. He helped start a radio station. He's done movies. He's done everything, and he's about to do it all with uh, Heritage Films, and he can be somebody you just call right now and set it up. Two months later, you're going to have yourself a documentary just in time for some of the holidays out there, yourheritagefilm.com. 713-893-8341, yourheritagefilm.com, 713-893-8341. Your home for Texas A&M football is Sports Ready Wheel 1150 AM and 93.7 FM. The Zone. The Zone. Hey, it's David Nuno. Texas known for football, barbecue, and hot summer temperatures. And typically, the hotter the weather, the higher your electricity bill. But with some help from Energy Ogre, a Texas technology company, you can lower your bill by up to 40%. In fact, we signed up two years ago, and they saved my family 35%. Energy Ogre will find you the cheapest electricity plant in your area. Manage all future contracts, saving you time and money. Go to energyogre.com and enter code HOWDY for a free month of service. That's energyogre.com to start saving today. We think it's time for a laugh. Brian Broadcasting and the Nikki Peterson Talent Network present Good Clean Fun, a comedy night with Carrie Pomeroy. So you guys, yes, I am a member of the Mommy Mafia. I have two kids. I have a four-year-old and a good one. Hollywood's favorite clean comedian is live in College Station, Friday, September 3rd at 7 p.m. at Skybreak Church. I was in the Zuma class, and there's this teacher, right? And she's all cute and sassy, and she's like, shake what your mama gave you. I'm in the back row going, my mama gave me sciatica and allergies. Bring your friends, bring a date, bring anyone who's ready for a good time. You guys, who's happy just to be out of the house? Really? Right, right? Good Clean Fun, a comedy night with Carrie Pomeroli, September 3rd, presented by Nikki Peterson Talent Network. Be discovered. Thanks in part to our sponsors, Strata Auto Repair, Mark's Manny's Appliance Repair and Cleaning Service, Dirt Road Rustics Furniture and Home Decor, Buff City Soap, Soap Makery, and Longway Home Adoptables. Tickets, VIP, and group packages available at brianbroadcasting.com. I'm Tulsi Reber with your community calendar on The Zone. Now on display at the Arts Council, Refrigerator Art. Art created during summer art camps and Saturday adult classes will be displayed in the lobby gallery through the end of August. The prenatal clinic is now accepting honoree nominations for the 28th annual You're the Tops event. The nomination form can be downloaded at bcsprenatal.org. The deadline is August 31st. A free seminar for seniors on evaluating your home for safety, comfort, and aging is being held the afternoon of Wednesday, September 1st. Contact the Mature Well Lifestyle Center to register. Registration is now open for nonprofits wanting to participate in this year's Brazos Valley Gives event. Register at BrazosValleyGives.org. You can hear Aggie football, Aggie basketball, and Aggie baseball right here on Zone 1150 AM and 93.7 FM. Online, listen to your favorite Aggie teams play at RadioAggieLand.com. I'm Tulsi Reber on The Zone. The fall edition of the Louis Bolina Show starts on Monday, August 23rd, and well, I would know. What does the fall edition even mean? The return of Cedric Golden of the Austin American Statesman at 12.05. Mitch Light of The Athletic, 12.05. Braden Gall of 440 Sports, 12.05. And Bryce Jones, well, he's still here at 12.05. The gang gets together for another football season. Listen in weekdays 11 to 2 right here on The Zone. Hello, friends. Tech Sacks Radio. 
presented by David Gardner's Jewelers here in the Rollo Insurance Studio. Hi to my friends on YouTube. Hi to my friends on TechZags.com slash live. And hello to everybody listening out there on The Zone. We appreciate you. I asked a question, OB, at the top of the show, somewhere on the top of the show, what would be your pitch to get a top recruit from outside the U.S. to come to Texas A&M? This all because of Theodore Mellon Ostrom picking Texas A&M as his place. Very happy to hear that, by the way. I got some text messages on the A&B text line. Uh, here's Lane in Centerville. My pitch, you want to go to Fuego? <laughs> all right. Sandy. Uh, in addition to what Olin said, I'd say also care about what happens on the field and on your uniform. You'll have a family for life. Not just a number here. Home is spelled A-G-G-I-E in Texas. Appreciate that. And um, Chris and Deer Park, a commitment before 9 a.m. That's pretty sweet. Ah, I okay. like the play on words there. Um, earlier we had, let's see, Peter in Washington State. OB, A&M had classes ranked 9, 5, 11, 13 through 15. Not a bad job by someone then the 13 class go back and see again who was good on that ricky seals jones and that you know who else go back and look at that 13 class and count up the hits and misses or some misses you've got to do more than than follow the stars that the uh rating services provide you got to actually go out there and scout them and like jimbo fisher and take a a three-star guy from uh, like in, in Nia Smith and things like that. By the way, I'll go out on a limb. I don't know how many stars this guy's going to have, Olstrom, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say he's probably he's the best Swedish player in America someday. Maybe ever. Uh, by the way, Chase in Houston says, barbecue beautiful women and playing the best ball in the country in the easiest pitch to someone from a different country, and you can always switch it up in that order. Appreciate that. Maybe he's tired of snow. Snow? Yes. Yeah. I saw some of those videos we were playing. That's snow. By the way, the quarterback threw a pretty he spiral. pretty good. <laughs> he, we may have to talk to him, too. We might become the Swedish national team. All right. <laughs> Thank you, OB. Appreciate yeah. your time, brother. All, All right. right. We're going to be talking some Kelamon here in the next hour, and Tom Luganville joining us as well here on Texags Radio. If you have a debit card, you're used to spending money. But what if your card actually ended up earning you money? That's not exactly normal, but that's what you can get at A&B. It's called Kasasa Cashback Checking. Don't mind the weird name. What you need to know is that it's a free account with cash rewards. Use your debit card for everyday purchases, and we'll pay you cash back every month. If that doesn't sound like normal banking, well, guess what? We're not a normal bank. So contact a and today and ask for Kasasa or visit a and Equal housing lender, member FDIC. Our publications reach every corner of the Brazos Valley, and we want to partner with you in sharing your message with the community. You may recognize a few of our Brian Broadcasting publications. Best of the Brazos Valley. Brazos Life, the annual manual. Welcome home, Brazos Valley. Brazos Family. Brazos Wellness. Brazos Valley Bride. Peace, Brazos Christian Life. With the combined power of seven magazine titles, 11 radio stations, and digital solutions, Brian Broadcasting publications can help you be heard. Call 979-695-9595 to learn more. Get connected and be in the know with the zone. Follow us on Twitter at Zone1150. Like us on Facebook, Zone1150. Subscribe to our daily newsletter at the Zone1150.com. This is KCNE College Station Brian. WTAW, I'm Chelsea Reber with a news update on The Zone. The College Station ISD School Board received 30 minutes of public comments last night. Nine of the 10 speakers joined two board members calling for a mask mandate. The 10th public speaker was Brazos County Health Authority Dr. Seth Sullivan. I recommend that we think about thresholds for where we need to have further mitigation factors, and I think that we watch what's happening with other schools very closely. Superintendent Mike Martindale said no action could be taken on mandating masks last night because the item was not on the agenda. The College Station City Council at its last meeting approved a contract allowing another for-profit company to offer the collection of recyclable materials. Before the vote, Councilwoman Elizabeth Kunha asked why the contract calls for the equipment to be washed at least once a week. Interim Public Works Director Pete Kaler said it was a sanitary issue involving organic trash being mixed with the recyclables. There'll be an odor issue. It looks unprofessional out in the neighborhoods. 
And for the city garbage truck, we do that on a daily basis. While voting for the contract, Kunha said she is opposed to requiring private haulers to wash their equipment. A DPS trooper on his way from Bryan to Austin for training Monday night sees a two-vehicle crash on Boonville Road. That led to the drivers of two pickup trucks going to jail on charges of racing each other. The driver of the truck that struck an SUV, 21-year-old Grant Sanders of Bryan, was also charged with running away. Also arrested for racing was 21-year-old Cameron Long of Bryan. For at least five years, United Way of the Brazos Valley has been investigating how to provide transportation for low-income people getting to and from medical appointments. United Way Vice President Peggy Goss says Texas A&M mechanical engineering students created a website connecting patients to volunteer drivers. Now United Way is asking everyone to go to their website and vote for their project to receive a $25,000 grant to cover costs. I'm Chelsea Reber on The Zone. Does the insulated glass in your windows refuse to come clean no matter how hard you work? If so, the glass unit has probably lost its seal. You might notice moisture between the panes, a hazy look, shadows, or even the growth of some white mold. If so, it's time to call your friends at Intercon. Not only are these conditions unattractive, but you no longer have an insulated barrier in your windows. There are a number of options available to you to remedy lost seals. Most options allow you to retain your existing window frame and just replace the bad glass with a new sealed unit. Clear insulated glass offers an insulating pocket, but no protection against solar heat gain. Low E insulated glass adds a coating between the sheets of glass. The coating blocks about 80% of the solar heat gain as well as the damaging UV rays of the sun. Another option is to trade out the entire window frame with a premium vinyl window. Since Intercon does both glass and windows, we can offer you a full complement of options. Call Intercon and get a free quote from a locally owned and managed business. Whether you have new construction or an existing home, let the fine folks from Intercon help you keep your home energy efficient year-round. Call Brad Beard of Intercon today at 823-3639. That's 823-3639. Good morning, sports fans. I'm Zach Taylor with your Aggie Sports Minute on The Zone. The Sports Minute is brought to you by Hilco Meta Roofing and Supply. Call 936-825-0500 or click hillcoatsupply.com. Football is a pretty big deal in Texas, and of course it's a pretty big deal to the Texas A&M players. However, it's not everything. In addition to being a standout on the field, sophomore wide receiver Chase Lane is also active in the community, serving as the treasurer of the student-athlete-led Blueprint organization. Speaking on the Blueprint, for people who don't know what it is, it's um, black leaders who undertake excellence and... Uh, yeah, I'm just, I've always been active in my community back in high school, coming from Houston, Texas, and just trying to carry over those same morals and how I carry myself into college and just trying to make myself appealing to the public in terms of being more than, a, uh, more than an athlete and also just embracing just everything around me. Lane has also been a fierce advocate of Aggie women's athletics and says the ladies should get as much love as the guys. I didn't do it for the likes or the retweets or anything, but I did it because I... I'm genuinely a fan of women, women's uh, athletics, and I feel like they should get the same support, if not more support, because our programs here at A&M on the women's side, they're very capable of winning uh, SEC championships and uh, national championships and Olympic gold medalists and um, a thing. As far as on the field, Lane is coming off a freshman season in which he hauled in 29 catches for 409 yards and two touchdowns. And that's been your Aggie Sports Minute, brought to you by Hilco Meadow Roofing and Supply. On The Zone, I'm Zach Taylor. You can hear Astros Baseball on The Zone, 1150 AM and 93.7 FM, plus Gospel 97.3 FM. Astros Baseball on Brian Broadcasting is brought to you by Kelly Burke Dozer. Listen in as the Astros contend for the AL West title. Listen in as the Astros battle for the best record in the American League. Listen in as the Astros contend for another World Series title. Astros Baseball on the Zone and Gospel 97.3 FM is brought to you by Kelly Burke Dozer and in part by First Financial Bank. Welcome back, Texas Radio, hour number two, here presented by David Gardner's Jewelers in the Rollo Insurance Studio. Kind of recap what we discussed in the first hour. I threw out this topic that we can kind of discuss a little bit here in this hour. Uh, what would be your pitch to a top recruit from outside the country to come to Texas A&M? I got my thoughts. Love to hear your thoughts as well on that. Uh, you can do that on our BCSI Associates hotline, that number 979-693-1150. Or you can text us on the AMB text line, 979-693-1150 is that number 
in a and College Station branch of the Amarillo National Bank. Good Texas Banking. Check out their website, a and B. Dot com is the number. And uh, we are going to try to talk a little Kellen Mon here. Not sure if that's going to happen anytime soon. Working on Courtney Cronin from ESPN. We'll see if uh, she's able to pick up the call. So we'll, we'll get you guys updated there because she had a tweet yesterday saying that he's looking a lot more comfortable after that first preseason game. So I'd like to get an insider's perspective. She does cover them uh, for, the, uh, for ESPN in Minnesota. So we'll, we'll try to get that update here momentarily. But uh, all the news about the topic that I threw out earlier today is because Theodore Mellon Ostrom has picked Texas A&M as his place. And, you know, I know the question marks out there. I understand the question marks. I totally do. Like, this guy's playing in Sweden. Like, who's he playing against? And I have those questions just like I have those questions when guys play for a, uh, excuse me, for a 2A school or play for a TAP school. Talent is talent. And there's an adjustment period for sure. But when you get these guys on campus and they come to these camps and you see their size, their speed, their strength, and you match them up against others, and then you have the top programs around the country all offering the same guy, that tells you what the potential could be and what other high-respected people are saying. Now, I don't know what the, his star is going to end up being, and it doesn't really matter. What to, to me matters is development, and that's what we've seen from Jimbo time and time again. How is he going to develop these guys? And we've seen him do it and do it at the, the highest level. But if I'm out there, there's a guy in London, there's a guy in Sweden, there's a guy in Kazakhstan, wherever, wherever he may be. It all starts to me with what's important to everybody is, you know, winning and where it starts with Jimbo. So let's, uh, let's now go to the BCSI hotline. We're joined by Courtney Cronin uh, from ESPN, who covers the Vikings and also all over national radio. We heard her with our friend Peter Burns here recently, and she joins the show now. Courtney, good morning to you. How are you? I'm great. How are you guys doing? Doing wonderful. Thanks so much for joining us. So Kellen Mann, obviously top of mind here with what he was able to do at Texas A&M and, and the Vikings going out and get him. I saw your tweet yesterday. It was, we had already reached out to you last week just to try to catch up with you with how he was doing. He had the preseason game. So let, let's start with yesterday's news and work our way back. You said he looked a little bit more comfortable and a little faster. Yeah, so I took that away from Monday's practice and just watching. So they, Mike Zimmer said that they're going to scrimmage this week. We don't actually know when that's going to happen, but he really wasn't happy with the way that the twos and the threes, and even if you want to call some of these guys four stringers, played in that preseason game against Denver. So I was keeping a close eye on the situation periods, what all they were doing with Kellen Mond, and I noticed that he got a two-minute drive at the end of practice. And it just I turned to a colleague of mine, and we were talking just like – does he look a little faster to you? Just kind of, you know, the accuracy, getting in and out of the huddle quickly. It looked like he was operating at a faster speed than he had on Saturday. So I kind of took a mental note of that. And then we were talking to Mike Zimmer on Tuesday. And he said that Monday's practice was the best that Mond has had in his limited time here with the Vikings. And you have to remember, he missed 10 days because of COVID. So he had a lot of catching up to do. So... I think what I took from that in all the comments that Mike Zimmer made last week, not once, but twice, that everything's in quote unquote slow motion for for Kellen Mond. And that was pretty apparent when you're watching him in the game on Saturday, where it kind of feels like, you know, he's either do it having predetermined reads or like, you know, knowing where the ball's gonna go before it's even snapped or he was taking way too long to go through his progressions. And of course, you're going to expect that with a rookie quarterback, especially someone you knew was a developmental prospect when you brought him into Minnesota. He was not a a complete finished product by any means. None of the quarterbacks are, but he didn't fall into that Justin Fields type category, um, which is the reason he was a third round pick. But I, I do think that there was a noticeable difference in the way that he started the week in practice. And even yesterday, I mean, the offense was not great. The red zone periods, especially with the first team unit were just really bad. Um, But I asked Wyatt Davis, who's the third team right guard. So that's usually the unit, the offensive line that's protecting 
Kellen Mond, uh, we talked to Wyatt after practice on Monday and he said, yeah, like I've noticed a difference. Like it was a lot faster, a lot more precise, a lot more crisp today. And I just think that that's the time that he's now had having the preseason game out of the way, getting the jitters out of the way. And also, you know, learning this playbook, like Mike Zimmer didn't say it directly, but it did feel like there was a concerted effort to limit his passing volume on Saturday in that game, just because he hasn't been around that much. You can say what you want about virtual meetings when he had COVID and I'm sure he was doing everything he could to stay up to date but that's not the same as being out there and getting those reps that he missed for 10 days. Courtney, well, I was confused a little bit with what Zimmer said. So at one point, he's not going to play. Then he says he is going to play. So can you kind of clear up what that whole mess was with just yeah. miscommunication or was just Mike all over the place? Well, I mean, I went back and looked through our transcript and he was asked about, hey, mom's coming off COVID. Um, you know, he's back in practice last week for the first time you know, do you think he'll be ready to play? And he said no at that time. I tend to think that maybe he either didn't hear the question correctly or might have just changed his mind. But, you know, they they saw what they saw with Jake Browning. And, and to me, that pick six was probably, you know, the moment where they're like, whether they were going to play Kellen Mond or not. I mean, he was suited up and they, they did sit 31 players. So they were really down to the, you know, two thirds of their roster that they had to get a look at that's the reason that they put Kellen Mond in at that moment, because you knew, okay, you're going to get him a two minute drive, not once, but twice in that preseason game, which those are probably the best situational reps that you can get because that's when pressure's on. That's when you have to go up tempo, sometimes hurry up, no huddle. You have to be precise and go, you know, move a lot faster than you might be doing when it's not that situation. And that's the big, you know, that's, that's the thing that, you know, irks Zimmer the most when he's talking about, well, everything's moving in slow motion. He needs to pick up the pace. Well, you're in a two minute drive. That's your chance to go down and score before halftime or before the end of the game. What better chance for you to see how somebody operates in and out of the huddle, how, you know, the, the game awareness, the clock awareness. And there were some moments too, like, at the end of the first quarter, at the end of the first half, like they, there was a, and this is probably not on Kellen Mond. I asked him about it after the game. And I think this is probably more a clock management snafu on the Vikings coaching staff where they could have used a timeout uh, in between 34 seconds and 10 seconds when they snapped the ball. And so he could have probably gotten another playoff, but um, cause they didn't end up scoring at all in the game, but specifically in that two minute drive, they settled for a field goal. So I think for him, it's just like learning the various situations of the game. And he talked about getting on it, the page, getting on a page, same page with his receivers, that's going to take time. And that's not what you expect is going to be an expedited process for anybody, let alone somebody who's getting your third team reps at quarterback right now. But I do think there were some promising things to take away in spite of what his stat line read, because we've already seen the last two days of practice. It looks like he's operating faster. So whether that message from Zimmer lit a fire under him or whether he just needed to get the rust out of the way and get into a game and be like, yeah, I can actually do this. then I think that it, you know, at least it worked. Courtney, do you expect to see him play a lot more still the, the remainder of the preseason? Yeah, absolutely. I think that depending upon how he plays this week, which is the Saturday night game against Indianapolis, I would not rule out Kellen Mond inserting himself over the next, what do we have? I'm looking at my calendar, like two and a half weeks before roster cuts um, into a position where he could vie for the number two quarterback job. When they drafted him as a third round pick in, in April, um, you don't, you don't have a third round pick quarterback sitting on the bench usually, or excuse me, being inactive for games. Like he'll probably not see the field, but I do think that they want and they expected him to be Cousins backup at a minimum this year. He has a long way to go to get there. Don't get me wrong. He has a lot to catch up on. But I do think if he has a good performance against Indy and then follows that up in the third preseason game against Kansas City on the road, he could be in a good spot to vie for that position. Kind of remind us when he was drafted, was that out of the blue? Was there expectations for Kellen to go yeah. there? No, so it was definitely not. My reporting back to like, March, um, there were some unhappy Vikings fans that did not like that. I was suggesting that, yeah, 
what I'm hearing is that they are looking for a quarterback prospect, not necessarily somebody to take over this year. We all know what Kirk Cousins contract is, but this is a team that, you know, for the last couple of years, sometimes they've had a veteran backup, whether it's been um, Trevor Simeon or Sean Mannion, like, you know, these incumbent veterans who are okay. Um, They're definitely better than rookies, but like they're never going to play because Kirk honestly is one of the more durable quarterbacks in the league, but you know, they figured at some point they need to at least give themselves the option of having a succession plan in place because Cousins is expensive. He has a $45 million cap hit next year. And unless they are able to and agree to an extension with him, which you may or may not want to do, like, has he gotten you past, you know, the wild card round? No. And so I don't know whether if your ownership, if you want to continue to invest in that, in that principle, or if you may want to go a different direction and, you know, try to find somebody who could take over, obviously not this year, but maybe in a year or two. And that's why they went with someone like Kellen Mond. Yes. As I reported, they were interested in Justin Fields. That was one of two players, including, I believe it was Sean Slater, if you forget all the names by now, um, the offensive tackle who went to Detroit. Um, those are the two names that they were eyeing in the first round to move up for while well, they miss out on fields because Chicago kind of swoops in and trades the farm with, the, with the giants to get him. But we're talking a completely different situation here in Minnesota. If fields was brought here, that, that means Kirk's on borrowed time. This could go one way or the other. If, if Mon develops how you need him to, how you expect him to, and they knew I mean, it took him, you know, better than anybody else. It took him four years to put it together at Texas A&M. This wasn't somebody who was a fully polished product. He went through two offenses with Kevin Sumlin and then Jimbo Fisher. Like it took him a while to put all the pieces together. That's why he was a four-year college player. The Vikings knew that they knew he wasn't, they weren't getting somebody that was a polished product that was going to need a lot of time using this year effectively as that red shirt year for him to learn how to play quarterback in the NFL. So Depending upon how things go with Cousins this year, I think that opens up a different conversation down the line. If that goes bad, then then you already at least have somebody in the wings. Like, and that was kind of their premise all along that we just need somebody to, you know, potentially be a guy for us that we could consider taking over the quarterback position if we decide to move on from Kirk Cousins in the future. Courtney, great reporting. Thank you so much for joining us. Hope to do it again. No problem. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Courtney Cronin, ESPN, doing really good work there. T- talking about Kellen Mond, 6 of 16, 53 yards last week, rushed five times for 25 yards. But uh, he's feeling a little bit more comfortable, as reports out at practice say. So we appreciate that report. Right now, though, a moment for our friends at the Association of Former Students. Love those guys. I'm actually wearing a shirt right now from it because uh, I'm, I'm proud to be a member of the Association of Former Students, the oldest organization serving Texas A&M in support of this Aggie network over 140 years. Those financial gifts from the Aggie network have empowered the association to be here, there, and everywhere for Texas A&M and Aggies all around in so many different ways they have been able to help others out there, those Aggies, 125,000 to student organizations. You've got uh, Midnight Yell Security, support of the MSC, Fish Drill Team, Parsons Mounted Cavalry, the ROTC departments. None of that is possible without your help, guys. And I- I'm helping. I hope you will help as well. And it's not very expensive. You can be a Century Club member for about $100 a year, $9 a month. You get the decal, you get the plaque, you get the Texas Aggie magazine. Plus, you're continuing in the oldest, most inspiring tradition of Aggies Helping Aggies. To learn more about the impact of the association or to get involved, make a gift. Visit AggieNetwork.com slash giving. This is the Zone. Zone. Aggieland's All Sports Station. AggielandBigDeals.com Shop local, buy local, save big. I'm struggling, can't pay full price. How about Aggieland Big Deals? Yeah, that's right. I'll be shopping local and saving big with discounts up to 30% on food, clothes, and car repair. Entertainment and personal care. Is it really gonna be convenient though? Just download the app right on your phone. Oh man, that's slick. Now I'm all in. Those digital certificates are fun to spend. Plus, I can print and send gifts along at AggielandBigDeals.com. When your diesel truck or construction equipment needs death, WPI has the best price in town. Only $8.50 for two and a half gallons. Regardless of your machine's make or model, WPI can help. From custom hydraulic hoses, O-rings to teeth, 
buckets and blades. Any part, filter, fluid, battery, or lighting is at your local WPI. Visit Jesse James at WPI's new location in Bryan. Highway 21 East at Marina Road or click WPI.com. Question. Would you pick a chain barbecue place over a hometown joint? Do you root for East Coast universities instead of a local team? Nah, then why choose a big Wall Street bank? A&B started in 1892. Five generations later, we're still owned and operated by the same Texas family. We support this community. We value your privacy. We make quick decisions, and we hate red tape. We answer to you, not Wall Street. Bank with A&B. Family owned, Texas proud. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. For the ones going above and beyond. For the ones reaching out, helping out, and lending a hand. For the ones people count on. You can count on Granger. Granger offers supplies and solutions for every industry. Backed by 24-7 customer support and specialists to help with hard-to-find products. Because you've got everyone's back. We've got yours. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. This is ESPN Radio. Head coach Mike Boynton, Oklahoma State basketball. Mixed talent, a work ethic that's been unmatched by any other kid I've coached. Talking to Matt Nagy right now, the head coach of the Chicago Bears. When I say the room is healthy, Andy Dalton is doing everything he possibly can to help Justin. Charles Haley, Pro Football Hall of Famer. I always believe that the fans, they're the ones that paid my salary. I always felt like I owed them something. Talking to Pat Connaughton right now, NBA champion. The talking head thing, it can't be done. The honest have to leave. It just makes it that much sweeter in the end. Rams head coach Sean McVay. Some of the most difficult parts of playing the quarterback position are really where he illustrates what a special player he is. Hall of Famer Oscar Robertson. It's a partnership. Now the players can decide if two or three want to get together. Years ago, owners could stop that. Played a tight end position with the Green Bay Packers, Jamichael Finley. If you got a guy saying, I'm not taking that shot, guess what that looks like? Oh, we ain't got a team player here. ESPN Radio, weeknights and weekends on Sports Radio 1150 AM and 93.7 FM. The Zone. Maybe it sounds like the beginning of like a, a doctor show. What was that show that used to be? I think uh, Goose from Top Gun was on it. What was that? With, and George Clooney was on it. What was that called? Probably before you were born, Dalton. I'm trying to think. Doctor. You're thinking of ER? ER. That's, it sounds like an ER intro. Can, can we play that intro again? I know I'm asking for a lot there. I apologize, guys, at the zone. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about me. Just worry about you. It is Tech Sags Radio presented by David Gardner's Jewelers here in the Rollo Insurance Studio. Our thanks to Courtney Cronin breaking down all things Kellen Mond. Uh, happy to hear he's feeling much more comfortable, more comfortable, I should say, um, with his role there as the third string currently quarterback to the Vikings, potentially could move up to the second string. And according to her report, he looked a lot better at practice on Monday and on Tuesday. We'll see how that develops and how he does this weekend. So happy to hear that report out there. Uh, I, I kind of wanted to bring this up here because why do you guys hate Tim Tebow? Everybody I talk to is so Tim Tebowed out and people don't like him. They're like celebrating that this dude got cut from the Jags. Celebrating. You know, and it, it's more about him than it is anybody else. And I actually, I was talking to OB about him a little bit yesterday. There's a little bit of JJ in him. You know, I, I, I do understand why, where people think he plays up to the cameras, but I just, a couple things. People get gigs because of people they know. Is it fair or not? I don't know. I got this job because I'm friends with Billy Lucci. And there's some of you out there saying, well, if you didn't know Billy Lucci, you wouldn't get that job. You're right. I know Billy, my buddy. That's how all, every job I've ever had, I think we even talked about this a couple weeks ago or when I first started, but every job I've ever had has been because of somebody I know. Hello, that's what recruiting is about, building relationships. That's what the Aggie Network is about, building relationships. This is all the same. If Urban Meyer, new coach in the NFL, felt that maybe he wanted to set a certain tone with a guy who could be his, his dude, nobody expected, well, some people did, but... It wasn't like Tim was going to all of a sudden change and become a tight end, a Pro Bowl tight end, after wanting to be a quarterback and not wanting to do with the Jets. Look, 
I understand it was a, an experiment and there was a methodology behind it. But if you have relationships that others don't have and somebody asks you to do something and you want to do it, you do it. I don't know why the celebration of him getting cut is such a big deal. I didn't think he was going to make the team. I don't think most people did. But if it wasn't for Bob Allen, I wouldn't have been at Channel 13. If it wasn't for Chance McClain and John Granado, I wouldn't have been at 1560 of the game. If it wasn't for Billy, I wouldn't be at Tech Sags. If it wasn't for my brother, I wouldn't have gotten a job at Chase Bank. So there's been some other... If it wasn't for John McClain, I don't get to meet Oliver Luck and get the job at the Harris County Houston Sports Authority. Every job, but I think the San Diego Soccers and the Mavericks were jobs because I knew somebody. And somebody, you know, th- are there more talented people? Absolutely. But does it fit your culture? Does it fit your vibe? I, that's what I think about when it comes to Tim Tebow, somebody who understands the way Urban Meyer wants to go about his business. Look, I like the guy. And I understand years back he had an opportunity to be a tight end and he didn't want to do it. And now, oh, now he wants to do it. Uh. Yeah, you know, people change. There was a time I didn't want to do radio. Things change. People change. People evolve. Opportunities. Now, is he a, you know, what's hot kind of moment in his life? All right. Baseball didn't work out. Let's go back to the NFL. Football didn't work out. Let's go try to get back to the SEC network. You know, who knows? Sure. That's okay. It's his life. That's fine. I, I, I think people like Tim are, are great. I love his story. I love his faith. I, I love the fact that he has a platform and uses it. And does he, is he in the media a lot? Does he like to be seen? Does he have maybe a different diet than everybody else? That's fine. You can do that when you're Tim Tebow. Just like you can do that if you're Brad Pitt. You can do that at certain levels. That part, I'm not cool with. Like I, I eat with my team. There was a report years back, I think that Michael... Jordan had his own like little area that he would change and wanted to be away from people. I don't remember that. All the videos I ever saw was Michael in the locker room around the rest of the crew. But the, there, there was a report on that at, at what point. But regardless, I think stories like Tim Tebow are great. I have no problem with that. And, and in fact, I, if I, let me tell you right now, I, I don't have any eligibility left, but let's just say I do. You don't? No, nah, I'm in. You're not going to J.R. Smith it and go back to college and play a different sport? You know what? Have you seen those stories? Yeah, I have. It's pretty and awesome. The, there's another one, too. I, in fact, let me see if I have the notes. The South uh, Carolina graduate assistant, Zeb Nolan, he's now been added to the active roster. So Luke Doty gets hurt, sprains his ankle. They don't have enough quarterbacks out there. And Nolan was uh, the backup to Trey Lance at North Dakota State. And he you know, signs on to be a graduate assistant. And now he's in the quarterback room. I think that's kind of cool. Let me tell you right now, Jimbo, if you need a pretty slow, not very tall, very passionate Tim Tebow-esque person in your locker room, I'll go take a class. I'll do whatever it takes. If, you, if that's what you want, that's fine. I won't have to dress in the other dressing room. I'll be with the guys. Fine. Yeah, I might be the shortest guy there and not the strongest guy there. Maybe. I don't know if I'll be the shortest. I'm five foot ten. I'm I, I'm sure there's somebody shorter than me, five foot ten and a half to be honest. But if you want to give me a chance, I'll set the. Now see, Jimbo doesn't need help. He's got his culture established. Everything is going out there. The Texans, for instance, if they needed, I wouldn't go to that train wreck. So never mind. But I don't know. I I like Tebow. I think he's good for the game. I hope he's always and not always, but I, I I'd like him to be involved. I thought he was great on the SEC network. I think, uh, I, th- I thought the baseball thing was cool. Take advantage of your, of your opportunities. I have been able to do things in my career because of people I've known. Now, don't take advantage of people, right? That, that's a different conversation, but you get an opportunity. You, and it, Coach believes that you can help set his tone in that locker room and teach people how to practice. That's been going on for years, by the way. This is not a new thing. Like people have added people to their locker room or taken people out to get rid of a certain type of culture in there. 
this happens. Catchers on baseball teams, they, 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 they may not have the skills, but they're a leader. This happens everywhere. We have seen that. And I got no problem with it. And if I'm Tim Tebow, I'm now calling the WWE. I'm calling TNA Wrestling. I'm calling one of I'm, he's, that That's one part that I think I agree with. He likes to be the story. I don't know the guy. Like, how do I know he likes to be the story? But I'm assuming he likes to be the story. But I'm okay with it. Because I think he, he brings something. He brings something to the table. I got no problem with how he goes about his, his business. In fact, I like it. So here's the deal, guys. In our next segment, Tom Luganbill joining the show, ESPN sideline analyst. Looking forward to chatting with him. I, I find his insight to be very good. I was told on YouTube, somebody on the YouTube channel was saying, hey, uh, he's, he hasn't been kind to a and I don't, I don't have that, uh, that little list. That every, like I, I, there's like, I, there was a point on this show, I don't know, three weeks ago, Dalton will tell you, that I was like, is this a guy okay? I don't care. I'm going to put on who I want to put on. Yeah. Ya se acabó el juego. The game's over. I'm going to do it my way. Listen or don't. Hopefully he's good. I'm not going to get Tim Brando back on, though. I learned that lesson real quick. Maybe at some point we'll get Tim on, especially after A&M beats LSU. Well, we can talk about that. All right, guys. Uh, the number here, if you want to be a part of the conversation, 979-693-1150, the BCSI Associates hotline, or the AMB text line, 979-693-1150 is the number there. But right now, I want to remind you, text radio, not to that number, Listen, guys, text RADIO to 900-900. Too often I get 900-900 to our number. No, let's try this again. Listen, remind you to text RADIO to 900-900 for your chance to win the Big Friday giveaway, courtesy of, courtesy of our friends at Aggieland Outfitters. I'm going to see Fadi here soon. Uh, we're going to have lunch. We're going to chit-chat, and I'm going to just try to recommend that he gives me all the shirts that he brings here to the studio because uh, the one he brought this week, oh, it's the bomb. I always pull it out because I like to look at it. It is the uh, Adidas soccer shirt that he's got out there. 2021 Aggie jersey, 100% polyester, aero-ready technology powered by the moisture-wicking fabric that absorbs the water. Also made with prime green performance fabric, which contains no virgin, newly created plastic. Perfect for wearing to all the soccer games this fall. Support your Aggie soccer team in this jersey. Check it out. It is the new Adidas 2021 soccer jersey valued at $44.99 at Aggieland Outfitters. Your community calendar on the zone. Now on display at the Arts Council, Refrigerator Art. Art created during summer art camps and Saturday adult classes will be displayed in the lobby gallery through the end of August. The prenatal clinic is now accepting honoree nominations for the 28th annual You're the Tops event. The nomination form can be downloaded at bcsprenatal.org. The deadline is August 31st. A free seminar for seniors on evaluating your home for safety, comfort, and aging is being held the afternoon of Wednesday, September 1st. Contact the Mature Well Lifestyle Center to register. Registration is now open for nonprofits wanting to participate in this year's Brazos Valley Gives event. Register at brazosvalleygives.org. You can hear Aggie football, Aggie basketball, and Aggie baseball right here on Zone 1150 AM and 93.7 FM. Online, listen to your favorite Aggie teams play at RadioAggieland.com. I'm Chelsea Reber on The Zone. Howdy, Ags. This is Dr. Krishna Shanmugam from BCSI Associates. I'm a fellowship-trained cornea and glaucoma specialist and eye surgeon, but most importantly, fight in Texas Aggie class of 2007. I was born in Aggie, raised in Aggie, and now back in the Brazos Valley to serve Aggieland, the incredible place that made me the person that I am today. We're the only fellowship-trained glaucoma, cornea, and cataract surgeon in town and would be delighted to take care of you locally for your eye exam and your eye surgery needs. Give us a call to schedule an appointment today with Dr. K at BCSI Associates at 979-701-2020 or visit mybcsi.com. You can hear the Paul Feinbaum Show weekdays 2 to 4 here on The Zone. Presented by Polaris Fund Center. Paul Feinbaum is yes. SEC Country. And, and Aggieland is SEC Country too. Jo join Paul weekdays 2 to 4 here on The Zone. Polaris Fund Center sells and service Polaris ATVs, Rangers, Razors, Global Electric Cars, Lotus, and the Polaris Slingshot. Polaris Fund Center, where they sell and service fund, not tractors, the voice of the SEC. And you can hear Paul Feinbaum weekdays 2 to 4 here on The Zone. 
The flagship station for Aggie Athletics is The Zone. Whenever the Aggies are playing, you can hear them right here at 1150 and 93.7 FM. Thanks to our listeners and our sponsors for backing the Aggies all season long. First Financial Bank, Bryan College Station Toyota, Rudy's Barbecue, Schulte Roofing, The Sleep Station, and Pioneer Steel. Here's a big gig to all these sponsors. Listen to Aggie Athletics on The Zone 1150 and 93.7 FM. If you miss my favorite show ever, Tex Aggies Radio, presented by David Gardner's Jewelers, you miss this. Leon's got a ton of strengths, and I feel like throughout his career, people have, have tended to hone in on the mistakes he made early in his career, and then they'll say, well, he lacks a step. Well, fine. He's a safety that's a senior starter that has started for three years plus a bowl game, and he doesn't run a, a you know, 4-4-5. Four, four, I think Leon could be one of those guys we don't talk about enough, David, that could have a great senior season. It's Texax Radio on The Zone. <laughs> Welcome back to Tech Sags Radio, presented by David Garner's Jewelers here in the Rollo Insurance Studio. Super excited to uh, get Tom Luganville here on the BCSI Associates Hotline. You see him on ESPN breaking it all down from recruiting to sideline reporting. Tom, thanks so much for joining us. I appreciate it. You bet, man. I appreciate you having me. Uh, so we'll start things off. This morning, a and uh, made a little splash pickup here. Theodore Mellon Ostrom from Sweden. Just uh, y- your thoughts on how Jimbo's just recruiting at such a high level right now. Yeah, you're casting a pretty wide net, right? I mean, (laughs) holy smokes. Uh, And and we're seeing that a little bit more. In fact, our group, uh, along with Under Armour, has gone over to Europe prior to the pandemic uh, several times uh, in in conjunction with the NFL and and, um, and, and running high school camps, middle school camps for opportunities for scholarship level kids to come over to the States and play college football. So, you know, right now, Texas A&M is developing into a hot brand. You you get the AP preseason poll. You see where they're at there. A lot of expectations. Um, the SEC, those three little letters, the weight that that carries, it's a big deal. You know, we've talked about conference alignment, and you see Texas and, and Oklahoma, and now they're going to reap the benefits of those three little letters and the impact that they have in recruiting because recruiting is all about perception. How does the kid perceive your program? And when they were 10, 11, 12 years old, what did they grow up experiencing and, and the impact that has on them? Tom, when you go overseas, what kind of talent are you seeing out there? Because I think from here, our, our perspective is, well, who are they playing against, really? But I guess size is size and speed is speed. Yeah, you're seeing measurables, but you're seeing a lot of raw athletes. Because the one thing that they don't have is they don't have that one-on-one personal training, year-round commitment to the development of being a football player. It's, it's very seasonal. There's a level of excitement that is just outrageous. I can remember when back in the, the mid and late 90s that being involved in NFL Europe and just how rabid the fans were for American football. And so what you have is height, weight. In some instances, you've got some speed. Um, but if you have developing size and, and ideal measurables that coaches covet, I think when you look at that and you're going to go that route, you might bring a guy in, you know, one or two. You're not expecting to play with them right away. You know, they're a guy you're bringing into the program. They're going to have to acclimate more than any other freshman has to acclimate. That's already a steep learning curve. And then you're going to redshirt them. You're going to feed them. You're de- going to develop them. There's so much that they don't know just because of that, uh, of that lack of, of year-round training. So there's a high ceiling and a high upside for many of those kids. Tom Luganbill on the BCSI hotline. Can you help us understand SEC recruiting? What I mean by that is Texas and Oklahoma, who are joining the conference here some someday in the next couple of years, They've recruited at a very high level, but there is a difference when you recruit SEC talent and the, the, the kind of players and the depth that you go after. Well, the most important thing, and we do this every four years, we take a, a long look at the U.S. national consensus and we start to identify where the highest pockets of football playing population reside in this country. So, for example, in the southeast, you've got Florida, roughly makes up about 20 million people in the state. But it's the states that border Florida that mean so much. So it's South Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana. And then obviously you started getting into into East Texas and now with with the SEC footprint into the state of Texas, which produces roughly 375 FBS signees a year. Your player pool is just so much stronger than it is in other areas of the country. So I'll give you a prime example. Uh, The Pac-12, the state of California. All right, well, the state of California is 38 million people. 
So it's very easy to sit there and say, well, that's got to be one of the big three. No, it's not. It's not. And the reason why it's not is because close to 60 percent of that population is of Hispanic or Asian descent. Now, for whatever reason, those two pockets of the population haven't generally been football playing populations. So you don't necessarily have a, a state of 38 million football playing population. The state of Georgia, conversely, is roughly 11 million people and they're all playing football. So it's just you start to look at that and it, it reveals the advantages. Um, it's been a big advantage for Notre Dame having those five affiliated games with the ACC. All of a sudden, they might catch a year where the scheduling has them at Miami and at Clemson. Well, that expands their brand and their footprint into the most talent rich uh, player pool in the country. So it's highly competitive. For whatever reason, it seems to be where the top defensive linemen and the top corners, two, two positions that are not growing on trees, and I think offensive linemen to some degree, they all seem to be heavily populated in that footprint, which is why you've seen the dominance of a Georgia and Alabama and LSU and Auburn, a, a Texas A&M, uh, even you know, uh, an Ohio State, you see them dipping down into Georgia, Florida, and Alabama and getting great players, and, and that's why they've had the program success they've had. Tom, how do you see this SEC expansion and what's happening there with the ACC and the Big Ten and potentially the, the partnership with the Pac-12? How do you see this shaking out over the next 12 to 24 months? Well, the music's going to stop eventually and somebody's going to be left without a chair. I think that's likely right now, probably teams affiliated with the Big 12. You know, this was this was a huge money grab on behalf of Greg Sankey's world dominance attempt, which is is working swimmingly, if you will. This is, this is about finances. This is about revenue generation. You look at the Big 12. The Big 12 is a conference. Uh, they, they brought in $439 million in the fiscal year of 2019. All right. The SEC brought in 720. All right. So there, there's no secret as to why this was so beneficial for a Texas or an Oklahoma. The question is, who are the other blue bloods out there that are revenue producers, that are brand friendly? that a Big Ten or the ACC or the Pac-12 can go pluck. Outside of Notre Dame, which has no interest of being affiliated with a conference right now, there's really nobody else out there. So that's why you're starting to hear these discussions about scheduling alliances, because ultimately what's going to happen to compete with the SEC and to be television friendly, you're going to have to create matchups that television partners want. So would it be exciting if every year you had Clemson versus USC? Clemson versus Oregon, Ohio State, USC, all right, Michigan, Clemson. I mean, you take those brands and those matchups and you present them at the table for television negotiation and you become pretty attractive. So I think it's one way to try and compete with the direction and the gap that's being created by the, the SEC and the strategic moves um, that, that they had made. And, and I think the other thing that we've got to recognize is Fox is a power. ESPN is a power. It's a brand. It's a business. And, you know, here at ESPN for us, we own almost all of the inventory. Well, now you're seeing more and more things go to digital, different platforms, different ways of consuming content. There's money out there involved in that. And I can promise you these programs, these commissioners, these presidents and ADs of these conferences are trying to navigate what is the next step for how we consume our sports. Tom, I got to ask you, we're featuring today Devon A-Chain. We're doing a series with the 21 best players at, at Texas A&M. A-Chain is the name that pops up today. When you see his film, what he saw, what you saw him do in the Orange Bowl, just your thoughts and maybe even looking back to what you saw when he was getting to college. Dynamic. I, I think that's the thing. You know, when I look at the offensive skill players, and, and I was actually, I heard Jimbo Fisher talking about this uh, as he was talking about the, the backs and the skill guys, it's you have three players in one. Right. You have you, you got return capabilities, you got ball skills, you got make you miss ability, you've got uh, running back vision, you've, you've got wide receiver hands and speed and they have it at multiple spots. So H chain kind of gives you that all, all that Swiss Army knife, if, if you will. And I think in today's game, today's college climate, the more you can do, the more versatile you are, the more the coaches can game plan, the more you can personnel people to death. You can you can get in the right personnel grouping. You can get in your shifts and your formations and everything and get your best player on their weakest player. And if you have multiple guys with a variety of skill sets, it just gives you so many more options when you're attacking a defense. Tom, I appreciate your time, my friend. Thank you so much for coming on TechSags. You bet. Thanks for having me.
Hey, thank you very much. Tom Luganville there on the BCSI hotline. We appreciate his time. Love his analysis there on, on ESPN. It was great to get him here on the show and get his perspective, too, on the uh, international players. They're going out there. They're seeing what's out there. And as you mentioned, the measurables are there. It is a seasonal sport. Uh, we have some seasonal sports here. It's not year-round. We know how that can be for not the big, big sports here. Football, obviously, dominant. I also thought the, uh, the point he made about California – about their population where you, you have a lot of the Asian population and Hispanic population that aren't playing football. And, you know, but you go to Georgia, everybody's playing there. I thought that was a pretty spot on stuff. All right. When we come back here on Texas radio, we are going to talk to coach G they're getting ready for their uh, season to begin. We'll, we'll talk with him about Florida state, the number one team in the country and everything that we saw here in uh, the last week, they had a couple of scrimmages. So, or exhibitions, I should say, we'll have that and more here on Texas. We got the Paul Feinbaum Show weekdays from 2 to 4 here on Sports Radio 1150 AM and 93.7 FM, The Zone. Everyone in the Brazos Valley has a unique story to tell. It's a community made up of survivors. He's going to, to have a full recovery. He's got such a good attitude about everything. Hard workers. Everyone kind of had a pivot and looked to see how things were going to change. Visionaries. That really drives that economic engine for growth within the Brazos Valley. And just good people. There are inspiring stories everywhere you look. And your local news team is dedicated to bring you more on KRHD News. Connecting the Brazos Valley. Thank you for joining us. Dave South here, ready to introduce you to the home team as they prepare to take the field. That's right. Your home team is the Lester Group, your team for buying and selling real estate in Bryan College Station, led by veteran real estate broker and third-generation local Lance Lester. His team is undefeated when it comes to customer service. As he steps up, he surveys the market, a little shifting on the defense, but Lance always seems to find a matchup that he likes. Quick snap of the offer. Lance drops back, checks his options. He looks downfield. He's got a contract wide open. He throws. It's tipped by inspections, again by the appraisal. Great block by the mortgage lender, and it's caught, caught, and he's in the closing zone. He could go all the way. He's at the 20, the 10, the 5, and he's taking it to the house, literally taking it to the house for signatures. This deal is closed. The Lester Group is lightning in a bottle. The Bellucci Hour is back. It is back at the tap every Monday and Thursday at 6 p.m. thanks to King Ranch Saddle Shop. Join Billy Lucci of Texags, texags.com, Texags Radio, and the Lucci Cast, along with Zach Taylor, the Infomaniac, and Sports Director Brian Broadcasting. Monday, Thursday, 6 p.m. It's the Bellucci Hour, Happy Hour, and it's all thanks to King Ranch Saddle Shop. Let the Bellucci Hour get you ready for Aggie Football 2021. The flagship station for Aggie Athletics is The Zone. Whenever the Aggies are playing, you can hear them right here at 1150 and 93.7 FM. Thanks to our listeners and our sponsors for backing the Aggies all season long. First Financial Bank, Bryan College Station Toyota, Rudy's Barbecue, Schulte Roofing, The Sleep Station, and Pioneer Steel. Here's a big gig to all these sponsors. Listen to Aggie Athletics on The Zone 1150 and 93.7 FM. The best is yet to come in College Station. Chase Lane is in for a touchdown! Yes! Head coach Jimbo Fisher and the Aggies are ready to rise to the top of the SEC. Swing to Anias. He's in the end zone. A six-yard reception. Join us Saturday, September 4th. It's the season opener versus the Cat State Golden Flashes. On your home for Aggies football. The Texas A&M Sports Network. Listen to Aggie football on 1150 AM and 93.7 FM. Online at RadioAggieland.com. Or or tell your smart speaker to play Sony 1150. Tex Radio presented by 